The top story is what you see here. And this is brand new. This is the video Donald Trump did not want anyone to see. It's the former president forced under oath to answer questions about an alleged assault in his civil defamation and rape trial. What you see right here for the first time tonight is this brand new footage from that case. And unlike, say, Donald Trump's arraignment and what will be the process at his upcoming scheduled criminal trial, where there were a few photographs that showed him right before the arraignment began, but there are no video cameras allowed in that proceeding in New York criminal court. But here tonight, you can see that the cameras were rolling which is exactly the scenario that Trump was trying to prevent with his defiance and delay tactics, just as he has ran from testifying to Bob Mueller or the January 6th committee or the New York AG pro. But here he got cornered, forced under oath, as you can see right there. And you can see from him talking, I'm about to play some of this, that he did not plead the fifth as he and others have done in other proceedings. Instead here, he responds. He parries questions about his alleged conduct in this taped deposition in the civil rape case. And we knew the jury had seen this tape this week. But now tonight, what's different is, according to the process, it is now public for the first time. So this video evidence is now publicly available. And Trump was pressed on the account by his accuser. He denies all charges. And he was pressed on his own apparent admissions on the infamous Access Hollywood tape. Here is some of the new deposition. In this video, I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the You can do anything. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the Well, that's what it's. If you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. So you saw right there, the lawyer garners a type of admission because Trump stands accused of what he asserted or claimed stars could do. And then directly thereafter, he puts himself in that same star category. The lawyer also pressed Donald Trump about claims that the accuser was not his, quote, type which draws this very controversial new exchange where you see Donald Trump discuss his, quote, first choice for this type of scenario. And that is something he uses in his alleged or apparent defense. So he's talking about his choice as a defense against what he stands accused of. And then you'll be able to hear as he turns this same verbiage on the lawyer in the room questioning him. She would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Man. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. When you said in that video that Ms. Leeds would not be your first choice, you were referring to her physical looks, correct? Just the overall. Not, I, I look at her. I see her. I hear what she says. Whatever. You wouldn't be a choice of mine either, to be honest with you. I hope you're not insulted. I would not, under any circumstances, have any interest in you. I'm, being, I'm honest when I say it. It is legally irrelevant, also obviously quite offensive, to turn the discussion and try to attack the attorney. But that statement there might also hurt Donald Trump with a jury that is being asked to weigh in the context of this civil trial, his alleged misogyny and his alleged conduct. Uh, my specialty when I was at the Department of Justice was trying crimes against women, crimes against the elderly, and sex crimes in particular, and child trafficking. And so he appears to be deeply unlikable uh, in that deposition, and oftentimes jurors want to determine whether or not they find someone truthful, likable, believable. He fails in all of those three categories immediately just from that deposition. And oftentimes, attorneys will tell you everything that you say can and will be held against you in a court of law. I guarantee you that there are going to be women on that jury, even men on that jury, that are going to despise him from because of what he just said. And to 
dig into it in the context of this case. Yeah. Is it uh, legally effective uh, to try to win or defend against what he's accused of by, by getting into uh, what he would argue is a, quote, choice or romantic appraisal, when the real question is, did you sexually assault someone? Uh, it's not a scenario where we're discussing even your, quote, choice or dating preference. Well, well it's going to be harmful to him because if the prosecutor or the, the civil attorney, rather, has, has any chops, they will explain to the jury that rape is not about looks. Rape is not about, um, you know, whether or not you like someone. Rape is about power. And it's very clear on this tape that he is saying as a star, he has the power to do whatever he would like to do to a woman. That is the classic defini mm. definition of a rapist. So I think that type of admission is going to be very, very harmful. I mean, if I were trying that case, I would feel like I just hit the jackpot. Well. Wow. It's very, it's very interesting hearing from you directly on that, that exact point. Mm -hmm. Then we have more of how he tries to parry and do his thing. And again, I, I mentioned this in uh, emphasizing in our reporting, there's plenty of Trump where he's trying to be in the spotlight and get the attention. Yes. Sort of the PR Trump. This is exactly what he's been avoiding, and I gave examples. And yet here he is. And so uh, basically I want to show he, the lawyer hands him a photo of Trump with this, this accuser, Carol, as well as Marla Maples, leading to this exchange. We have in front of you a black and white photograph that we've marked as DJT23. And I'm going to ask you, is this the photo that you were just referring to? I think so, yes. Okay. And do you recall when you first saw this photo? At some point during the process, I saw it. That's, uh, I guess, her husband, John Johnson, who was an anchor for ABC. Nice guy, I thought. I mean, I don't know him, but I thought he was pretty good at what he did. Um, I don't even know who the woman, let's see, I don't know who, it's Marla. You're saying Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah, that's, that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. Here. Carol. Oh, is that? The oh, person okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who For is this? Point, wife. And the person, the woman on the right is your then wife, I don't Ivana? know, this was the picture. Ivana. I assume that's John Johnson. Is that that's Carol? Because it's very blurry. <laughs> what do you see there in that exchange? Because we're, we're so used to this voluble Trump and his yeah. fans have a certain idea of him. And here he, he really seems to be kind of running out the clock or using a lot of words to just not say anything well, about the photo. Not only is he using a lot of words, I mean, on the back of the fact that he said she's just not my type, he married Marla, Marla Maples. This woman looks just like Marla Maples at that time. Mm. So that flies in the face of whatever kind of weird defense he thinks he has. And so, again, this is the worst possible type of evidence, I think, in a case like this, which is he said, she said, in a, in, in a sense. It's circumstantial, and it, it's happened a long time ago. Memories fade. But this puts you right th there and right then. And let's also remember, he's not in the courtroom. Most defendants that are being accused of something as heinous as sexual assault, whether it be a criminal defendant or a civil defendant, would you not want to get into that courtroom and defend yourself? He's not hmm. there. Yeah. But this puts him in the courtroom and puts him in a way that's very unflattering. Again, I would say this was a very, very, very good day for that civil defense, for that civil attorney. Right, which we're only learning about now that we can actually see the video. The, the last little piece I have is, is sort of the inflection or perhaps the um, national moment to revisit what happened in 16. And yeah. some people are understandably tired of it. And yet I think we should keep in mind that the video we're about to see, which is, again, the Access Hollywood, is not being offered um, in a political context. It's not being offered in a Trump documentary. It is being brought forward by the lawyers representing the woman who says uh, that she sought this accountability in court. So it is in that context that this is back out here. Uh, and we don't usually see this, which is Trump in this setting, sort of just right. sitting through it. Let's take a look. I'm going to use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. I, just, I don't even know where. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> I can do anything. This is just, again, in the deposition, him sort of sitting through it, yes. which they've released, um, both in law but in life, given your history here. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think America takes from all of this now that he was, he did lose the vote, he, fewer people voted for him, but he was elected to the Electoral College even after that was exposed. Right. A lot of people and women's advocates looked at that as this sort of un, unacceptable affirmation. Me Too movement came out of that, partly related to the tectonic yes. plates under Trump. Um, and here he is now at least being held accountable in the civil context for, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what the jury says, but for this alleged assault. Well, what I saw on that tape is I don't need consent. They let you do it. Mm -hmm. I don't need consent to kiss someone. I don't need to consent to touch someone. I can touch them by their genitals because I'm a star. You always need consent for any sort of unwanted touching, for any sort of touching. And here he is in a case where he is accused of unwanted touching, unwanted sexual assault. Yeah. And he is saying... But I don't need the consent anyway. Yeah. Again, I think this type of evidence is perhaps even stronger than have, having him on the witness stand denying it. More Fox News texts. This time from Brett Baer, who's always said he's the big straight news anchor over there. Well, he was caught plotting privately with Tucker Carlson, now ousted. And these new texts obtained by the Daily Beast, we here at MSNBC have not confirmed or obtained them, um, tell a story. On November 5th, this is three days after the election, Carlson secretly writes to Bear, we could lose our audience. And Bear responds, we've been pushing for answers. I have pressed them to s slow. And I think they will slow walk Nevada. The votes don't come in until tomorrow. Does this sound like a straight news reporter, like someone at the AP who is just following the election results and going to tell you what they find? Or does it sound like in this text that Brett Baer is panicked and worried that if he says true things that the audience doesn't like, it'll be bad. And so they at least want to slow that down. Then Carlson writes, quote, when Trump loses, so they knew that was coming, he's going to blame us. That's going to be very bad. I've got four more years here. Well, that didn't turn out to be true. I'm stuck with Fox. That didn't turn out to be true. He goes on to write, got to do whatever I can to keep our numbers up and our viewers happy. Now, Bear, again, who says he's the straight news guy, talking to Carlson, writes back, yes. So compare that to this. Does the president watch your show? I know he watches my show. Obviously, I think he likes the opinion shows a little bit better than the news shows. I see. Fox, fair, balanced, and unafraid. You've been saying that a lot on your show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the tagline that I, when I took over for Brit Hume, fair, balanced, and unafraid. When I took over the show, I said, Brit, can I keep the tagline? And so now, I, I, sometimes I say fair, balanced, and still unafraid. Unafraid or afraid that saying things that were true, they both evinced the knowledge Trump was going to lose, but saying that or saying that in a timely manner, which is how live news works, would upset the audience, which they were afraid of. Caught. Now, we checked in with Fox, and I want to share the response they gave regarding the calls. They say Fox News stood by that Arizona call, which was the big one that went against Trump despite intense scrutiny. They go on to say that there was a narrow margin there and add, quote, it's hardly surprising there'd be postmortem discussions surrounding the call and how it was executed. Fox also points to something that Bear said in September 2022. I fully supported our decision desk's call and would defend it on air. So there is at least a tension here, if not an outright contradiction, between talk of unafraid, courageous, real-time facts, no matter what the response is, and what the texts in private show. More and more evidence coming out from that defamation case. <laughs>